Hello and welcome back to a new video. Today is Saturday and we're going to be looking at how to create um, this overlay almost to um, a piece of type. Um, this video for the, the Ventures typography has been uploaded to the channel so if you do need to do that first uh, feel free to um, go and find that on my channel which is a recent video and um, yeah let's get into it. So what I've done is I've illustrated over the top of um, my existing the ventures typography and i've just done that in procreate but that's possible to do in illustrator as well so what i've just got is basically an outline of uh, the type here and to get to this i will show you how i got to this so i'm going to backtrack a few steps and what i've done is i've grabbed the psd file from uh, from procreate i'm then going to scale it up and then i'm going to image trace and do uh, I think I go with sketched actually let's go with silhouettes and click OK as you can see it then uh, makes them everything into uh, actual vector graphics and we can click expand and then we can click ungroup and that will just give us a bit of flexibility if we need to change anything later on in blender so uh, everything's through here and I just need to rotate it slightly because my bad I uh, did something wrong on the PSD file size um, but yeah this looks about right so what we're going to do is now export it so we're going to go to file we're going to go to export export as and we're going to save it as an SVG uh, make sure it's in the .svg file that's very important for you to carry on to the next step okay so we're through into the existing blender file and we have the typography already complete as I said this is from a, a previous video tutorial so if you haven't watched that go check that out um, or you can use be using your own type if you're still following the, the process of how this is done. Um, okay, so what I've done is I've gone to File, I've gone to Import, and I've gone to SVG, and it's imported the graphic right here. And as you can see, it's definitely not the scale in which we need it to be. So we're going to scale up by selecting everything and then pressing S on the keyboard. And I press 3, and I'm going to rotate it on the X coordinate by 90 degrees. So I'm pressing uh, R, X, 90 and then I'm pressing RZ90 and that should put it on the right front axis um, when I press 3 so I'm pressing 3 to go into that front axis like that okay so I'm going to scale it and get this is quite an important part to get it as close as possible to the existing um, way you illustrated it so I'm just looking at all the way areas connect I think this is close enough we can move stuff around later on um, but I think that's about right. So you may, may have to adjust your scale um, and, and change some things. But that's looking good. So we're going to press G and then X and we're going to move it just in front uh, of the graphic. We're going to move everything obviously around everything very, very soon. And what we're going to do now is we're going to join everything because we know that um, we're going to have everything consistent in terms of smoothing when we're sculpting. And we also know that we're going to move assets around. So um, I might actually just make a quick duplicate. So I'm going to grab the composition. I'm going to press Command C and I'm going to make a new collection outside of that collection and call this uh, backup. In case we do come across something that doesn't work right, and I'm just going to paste that into there. I'm going to make sure that's all hidden until in case we need it at another point. Okay, so let's right click and select the existing composition and we're going to select one of them and we're going to press Ctrl J and it will join all of them together. You can see that there's a little dot here that is a bit annoying. Um, in fact, I will delete that right there. And we'll grab the comp again and we'll grab something and press Ctrl J. Okay, so uh, what we'll do is a bit of a cleanup. We'll go to Object, Set Origin to Geometry, make sure that's set in the center. And we will now go ahead and extruding this mesh, this sorry, this curve which it is currently. So now we have real full access to the ways in which things are, are laid out, um, especially in like the 2D form it is currently. So feel free to go and adjust things if you feel like things aren't going to look right. But for now, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go to the curve object properties. I'm going to go to geometry, and I'm just going to look how far I want to extrude this. These are going to be quite delicate, so I'm going to set this to point. Zero, zero, 001. In fact, it might need a bit more. I'll set this to 0 0.05. It's looking about right. After a bit of sculpting, um, I think that's going to be a bit of weight. Bearing in mind that the smooth tool does reduce the size a lot. So bear that in mind. 
We're going to then go back to the material section and we're just going to delete that default material because we don't want that on at the moment. And I think that's everything we need to check. Um, so yeah, we're going to now convert it to a mesh. So we're going to go object, convert to mesh. And now we can see that everything is in this mesh form, but it's really not going to be very useful to model it because the way that this is laid out doesn't give us anything to work with on this axis or anything on the front face. So we need to remesh all of this basically. So I'm going to come out back out of edit mode. We're going to press the modify properties. We can click add modify and we're going to go to, um, we're going to go to remesh. My mind went blank for a second there. And then if we scroll down, being very careful with the volume that we decrease it by because this can really affect your computer. I'm going to set it to 0 0.0005 for me and we'll click apply. Okay, so we're over into sculpt mode and we are now going to start working on smooth everything out and then we're going to work on morphing it around the actual type. So um, this is the way I do it. There is other ways of doing this, but I think this works best for this typography in particular. So we are going to grab the smooth tool, which is found on this side, and we make sure that the object that we are we are going to be smoothing it was selected before we go into the sculpt mode. And uh, yeah, we're just going to start smoothing all of this out. I'm actually going to duplicate it on the Z axis so you can see there's a little mirror option at the top here and we'll like change it also back onto the Z so that means it's going to flip onto this side. So yeah, let's get that started out. So we're going to smooth this out. As you can see it's going to be very, we're going to have to be almost very fast over this because we almost want to keep the weight of everything um, because we're going to be pulling this around a lot. Um, so yeah, we're not going to be spending too long on this for the terms of the video, but feel free to pause the video and yeah, spend time on making sure that all the edges are right to, in terms of what you want. Um, it's important to, as you know, to um, make sure this is looking right. So I'm just speeding through all of this, just making sure I think it looks right. I love the idea of having the smaller areas and the thicker areas. That was the intention of it when I was, um, when I was illustrating over the top. Okay, so we're getting there. As you can see, we're going to have to shade smooth this when we are get back to the normal viewport. Okay. I think we are almost done. Guaranteed there'll be one I've missed. Let's have a look. Yep, I knew it. Alright. Um, okay, that's looking good. That's looking how we, we intend it to look. Um, I haven't missed anything, I don't think. That's all looking good. Okay, so now we're going to see that how it's looking from this axis. We're going to come back out of sculpt mode and we're going to right click and shade smooth. Then we're going to go back into sculpt mode and now we get to do all the fun stuff which is uh, pulling this uh, mesh around. So we're going to grab the grab tool and it can be te very temperamental in ways that this is going to work. So um, it might work the way you want it to, to do but um, as I said, it, it's very temperamental. So I'm going to be switching a lot between my seven view, which is the top view, and three, which is my side view. Um, the reason for this is because I want to work in seven view to almost get that wrap around. Um, and I'm going to switch to Z axis off up here. And okay, so I'm going to start to play around with how this is looking. And also need to remember that this is only going to be shot. Oops, let me not do that. Shot from this angle here. So bear that in mind that some things don't need to be perfect unless it's shot from the, the specific camera angle, right? So um, yeah, don't worry too much about being too perfective on ways that are outside of the shot. Um, okay, so let's start, let's start moving this stuff around. Um, I'm looking to keep it almost like it's sitting on the mesh and it's been, it's hit it almost. So. Yeah, some parts are going to need pulling around like this. See that that's almost like morphed into it, which is, I guess that's fine. Um, but yeah, this is going to be quite time consuming to do. Um, I might not cut it, I guess we can talk through some things. Um, it's actually quite a good opportunity to talk about some um, projects which are going on. Uh, we have the Discord community, so shout out everyone in the, in the Discord at the moment, making it 
such a good vibe to to be showing work in there um so yeah if you're not already joined um i fully recommend joining our discord community and it's based on basically creating more of a community in terms of graphic design and, and design so yeah if you're involved with the creative space or you'd like to be involved with the creative space feel free to join um that discord because uh yeah it's uh, just a good good environment to be around uh, people are learning learning from each other so um yeah it's a, it's a great it's a great little opportunity there um and i will link that in the description below um but also in terms of like videos and content on the channel at the moment i am trying to do my best to post as much as possible um because um yeah i just really enjoy making videos and people seem to find use in a lot of it so um yeah i appreciate i appreciate all the, the nice comments and everything like that so uh, yeah, it's really cool. We're gonna set this to. I feel like I need a bigger radius, so I'm gonna set this to 2,000. I think that's possible. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna. It just almost feels like I'm breaking the mesh up a bit too much. Um, I can lower this down. Actually, I'll lower this to a thousand. I feel like I'm affecting too much now. And I can start to morph this around. Um, yeah, we're gonna work on as well the idea that this could go through that gap. So. Uh, I'll drop down my radius. I'm going to grab this piece. And this is where sometimes the the fact that I'm going to have a look what this is going to look like uh, once I get it through. As you can see, I'm breaking the mesh quite, quite drastically here. Um, if you were to do it in a separate layer, it might benefit you more. Um, in fact, it would definitely benefit you more to do it in like a separate layer vibe. Um, but let's have a look how this looks. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. Uh, let's have a look in rendered view. Nice, so you can really start to see everything like starting to morph around, right? Um, and it's gonna be quite time consuming to get all this, this completed, um, but I'm hoping you're getting like a gist of how this is gonna work. In terms of like thickness as well, this is looking quite flat on there, so we can use the could use the blob tool and come out of the in this view and we could also grab the inflate tool as well and just keep going between these um, the smooth tool etc uh, I'm just looking for areas let's grab the grub tool nice that's a lot better um, so yeah just keep playing with that and uh, yeah, you should be able to get to a, an interesting outcome. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna speed through the video. I'm just gonna make a quick cut and then I'll come back to you guys once I've completed the process and we'll have a quick talk around it, what's happened and um, yeah, we'll basically go from there. So hopefully this has helped you so far and um, yeah, I'll see you in a second. Hello, I'm also back. Um, <laughs> I just thought, oh, while I was uh, sculpting this all out, um, I was actually thinking of ways in which I could use other brush tools and I think it's important to mention other parts as well so um, within the sculpt mode if I come out of the render view um, we can also see that I've been using the rotate uh, tool and what this does is it allows you to like rotate the mesh um, on an axis so probably a better example would be something like this uh, and I'll increase the brush size to something like this you can see I can start to get some real fluent feels of like if feels something feels a bit flat that you might have illustrated through, you can get a really nice way of like rotating the mesh as you can see here. So yeah, be very careful of how you use this. I'd probably use it on the front axis like this, um, but you can see I've started to use it in places. Um, and yeah, it's just a nice little <clears throat> little change and a breakup right of what what's already been going on. So. I will be using this a fair amount within this and it smooths everything out and if I go into the rendered view you can see that it works really well with the chrome um, it's kind of varies up your blacks and how deep your blacks are especially with your HDRI so uh, take that in consideration um, when, when you're working through this um, but yeah in next videos and, and stuff like that I think it's important for us to talk through our, all these tools on the on this side because there's a lot to go through and uh, they can all have, all like um, impact the way you use um, 
and create typography. So, okay, so uh, we're back, and I think this is how I'm going to leave it. Um, it's all up to your interpretation, right, and how the illustration was. Um, but I don't feel like I need to do much more with this. Um, so yeah, that's how it's looking. I've added a chrome material. So if you guys have been waiting along for the chrome material, basically all it is is a new material. I've set the metallic to full, obviously, and I've set the roughness to 0 .0008 um, because I want it really low, but I also don't want it to catch too much of like the, the HDRI which I'm using. And the HDRI which I'm using is Sunset JHB Central. It's the one I've been using pretty much for recently for, for all of these uh, type pieces. Um, but yeah, that's it basically, guys. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, I'll do. I'll put up a quick render of the final piece uh, now. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Make sure to join the Discord and subscribe. Subscribing is uh, massive, and I appreciate it. even if you like like the video, that'd be really cool. And yeah, hopefully I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.